So Remy and Papoose, they have a conversation. Well, no, they don't have a conversation. This is how it really started. Okay. We all know that Remy Ma performed in tribute to Missy Elliott at the VH1 Hip Hop Honors, which was a pretty good show that I never got the chance to review because of work. But at the end of the day, she did the damn thing and she performed her hit song all the way up and all of that. So, due to that performance, um, Papoose took Remy Ma out to eat to celebrate the fact that, you know, she you know, pay tribute to Missy Elliott. It was a good night for her. And now it's time for her to get the word. So she gets a FaceTime from her manager. And it's pretty clear to us now that Remy Ma has decided to let Papoose go as her manager. So, you know, that, and she hired Shay. So, you know, Shay can look after her and everything like that while Pap can manage the kids. <laughs> and then be her husband because that's all she really wants Pap to be is her husband and not her manager which I understand because sometimes when you have a husband and then your husband is your manager it don't always go the way that you want it to go so I get where it comes from because I mean look at Mary J. Blige and Kim Do. they didn't got divorced and Kim Do is taking all of her motherfucking money and dragging her through the fucking mud the only good thing that's going to come out of this situation with Mary J. Blige and Kim Do is a hot fucking album and that's what the fuck I'm waiting no. So there so I do not want Remy Ma and Papoose to be in the thick of it like Mary and Ken do. But what's really funny about it is that when the FaceTime came about, Papoose realized that her manager was pregnant. So that pretty much said, Oh, so your manager pregnant. She still can work while she's pregnant, but you can you act like you can't work while you're pregnant. You know what I'm saying? So you know, Remy Mom was like, I still got time to have the baby pap. And then Pap was like, oh, I don't even want to have no baby no more, blah, blah, blah. You know, I just love Remy Ma and Pap's relationship. It doesn't really get that much airtime for whatever reason that may be. But I love their relationship. It's probably one of the realest relationships on the show. So then we get a sit down with Yandy and Juju. Um, Yandy comes to Juju. And she tells Juju that things didn't go so well with her and Mendeecees when she told Mendeece that um, she didn't send the paperwork off. And Juju was like, so you mean to tell me that, that um, Mendeece didn't even know that you didn't send the paperwork off? And Yandy was like, well, you know, at the time I didn't see it as a big deal. But Juju was like, come on now, Yandy. And I was feeling Juju on that because, Yandy, girl, please, how can you sit up there and have a whole wedding, marry this man live on national TV, and not even tell him? that you're not sending off your paperwork which is understandable why you did not send it off that's it's it's a good uh, it's a big understanding there i do get it but at the same time why would you not tell him that don't you think that as your husband he is privy to that fucking information and you got him looking like a fucking clown and you got yourself looking like a clown because you keep talking about what a wife does a wife does this a wife does that when you ain't even a damn wife your common law wife is really what the fuck you are, honestly. So, I mean, girl, have a seat. But then she drops the bomb that she was contacted by a girl named Coco who winds up being Samantha's friend. Juju ain't feeling that idea. She don't trust the fucking idea. You know what I mean? Like, anything dealing with Samantha and Erica, Juju don't trust it. Neither do I. But she said that she going to meet up to, with Coco because she's concerned for Lil Mendeecee. That's the whole meeting with Coco. Coco tells Yandy that she feels some kind of way. And she feels like um, she's, you know, she feels some type of way about Lil Mendeecee's and that something needs to be done. So because it's all about Lil Mendeecee's, because that's how it was brought to Yandy that it was all about Lil Mendeecee, you know she got to come running. Because it's a soft spot for her. Lil Mendeecees is not really her child. But you know she raised him as such. So she feels some type of way. And she's going to address it with Coco. So then she winds up meeting with Coco. And you know Yandy was like. You know I won't really trust anyone. That hangs out with Samantha and Erica. But I'm going to see what the hell Coco got to say. Coco comes in. Dropping major tea about how. 
you know, there's been phone conversations with Samantha and Erica and recorded phone conversations at that about how they're going to take Candy down, how they're going to drag her name through the mud, how she ain't going to never be able to do this and never going to be able to do that. And everybody going to see the real truth about Yandy. And I was sitting up here like, you know, I don't fuck with that fame blog for shit. But I did hear months ago, before the season even aired, that there were recorded phone conversations with Samantha and Erica and they were planning on they were plotting on how they was gonna bring Yandy down on love and hip hop. And you know what? I find that to be very fucking ridiculous and very pressed. Everybody wanted to argue me up and down the other week about Erica not being pressed. A press only a press bitch would go out of her way to try to make somebody else's life a living fucking hell. That's what a press bitch does, and that's what the fuck Erica is. A pressed ass bitch. And y'all don't gotta y'all ain't gotta um agree with that. Y'all really don't, but she is a press bitch. And so is Samantha. Because why y'all so mad at Yandy? If y'all got a problem with Yandy, y'all know a way to do to do Deal with it. Why y'all gotta go and plot up on ways to bring this woman down? She ain't trying to bring y'all down. She just wants the kids to be together. Although Yandy has been overstepping her bounds, which is, I said that from the very beginning. But at the end of the day, when y'all talking about bringing people down and tearing up their motherfucking reputation, that becomes something else when you're trying to scandalize and smear someone's name. That's where the fuck shit comes in. It. So I don't respect that at all. And Coco is messy for even bringing it to Yandy. Like, I don't respect her either. But at the end of the day, I most definitely don't respect Samantha and Erica because they want to make Yandy out to be the bad person when they sitting up here having phone conversations about how they going to bring this motherfucking bitch down. So y'all really need to get a clue and get a motherfucking life. What bitch has the time to sit up and, you know, plot on ways to bring somebody down? Like, it's really ridiculous to me, though, but... You know, that's what press bitches do. And I still stand by Erica Press and so is Samantha. Yeah, Yandy ain't perfect, but she's not the one plotting to bring someone down. These two bitches is. The two bitter baby mamas is. So then, DJ Self, he sits down with his um, artist, which is the first lady of Gwen Entertainment by the name of Major Galore. We haven't seen her in a couple of episodes. The last time we seen her was when she was introduced as the uh, first lady of Gwen. And you know, it um that's when he learns that Mariah Lynn has been taking shots at, you know, Major Galore talking about in the street, trashing her in the street. And so, you know, Major um was like, you know, I don't really like Mariah Lynn. You know, she's been coming for me. I've been getting all sorts of information from other people about how she been coming for me, talking about me like a dog and just degrading me like it wasn't shit. And you know, um, I don't wanna I don't wanna have nothing to do with her. But self was like, y'all both are on Gwen, so I gotta put you two together so y'all can have a conversation. Major really ain't interested in talking to Mariah Lynn at all just because she's annoyed by the shit that Mariah Lynn has been saying about her. But because it's DJ Self, she gonna sit down and talk to her, I guess. So that's when DJ Self and Mariah Lynn they meet up to clear the air. And, you know, um, Mariah Lynn, you know, says that she wants to work with DJ Self and DJ Self is willing to work with Mariah. But it comes down to the fact that she's been dissing Major Galore in the streets. And he doesn't appreciate the fact that she's been dissing Major Galore in the streets. So then... You know, she was like, well, she's been taking shots at me, too. You know, I did say a couple of things to a radio DJ or whatever about her. But she's been saying things about me, too, that I don't appreciate. But I do want to work with you. So I don't want to have, you know, I don't want to create any problems. But then Gwen and Entertainment and then DJ Seth was like, well, I got to put you two together. Because y'all can't be fucking up my money. And we're supposed to be a family unit. So we can't have the back and forth between the two of y'all. And you know... At the end of it all, when it boils down to it, Mariah Lynn is, is a fuck-ass bitch, in my opinion. Because you were sitting up here plotting to work with Cisco, and you made it out like DJ Seth wasn't doing nothing for you. But then, when Major Galore got a contract, you want to get mad. And that's why you was taking shots at her, and that's why you was trashing her name in the streets. That's what it's all about. You mad because she was the first lady, and you wasn't. Bottom line. So you ain't really ain't got no right to be upset, to be quite honest. So that's when DJ Self comes to Magic Galore 
and to talk to her about the Mariah Lane situation. And he was like, well, I'm going to put you two together. And um, he was like, Mariah Lane is on her way. And she was like, right now? And he was like, yeah, right now. Y'all got to talk about this shit. We can't have y'all two bumping heads like that. So then... That's when Mariah comes in and they sit down and they have a conversation already tense from the beginning, already catty. Mariah was saying that she wants to have a conversation with Major, but Major don't want to have a conversation with her ass. So then, you know, she was like, Mariah was like, I'm not about to be disrespected. I just want to have a conversation with you. And Major was like, well, I don't appreciate what the fuck you've been saying about me in the streets and blah, 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 blah. And I understand what Major coming from. You know, she really hasn't done anything to Mariah Lynn but sign a contract. You know what I mean? And became the first lady of Gwyneth, which she rightfully fucking deserves. You know what I mean? So, you know, Mariah Lynn really ain't had no right to be talking about her in the streets like this. She really did. But because she was fucking mad, she wanted to be on that bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, a pressed-ass bitch. Something like Samantha and Erica, but... But um, DJ Self was like, y'all got to calm down. This is all about the Gwen thing. And y'all got to be right for Gwen. Like, I can't have my two artists going back and forth. And I can't have my two artists, you know, doing this. We can't have it. So, that's just what that was. So, then, Tara. Tara returns to Love and Hip Hop New York for the kids. So, her and Cisco, they have a conversation, and he decides to confide in Tyra about his issues with Peter Guns. And his issues with Peter Guns really stems from the fact that Peter Guns still fuck with Rich. And I feel like that's the most pettiest bitch ass, bitch made, fuck boy ass, you know, woman ass, pussified ass bullshit that Cisco can do. But I've been saying that Cisco is a pussy ass nigga. He's very petty and he always act like he needs some always or something like that. Like he always act like he needs some summer's eve or something like his pussy is on, on fleet. Like he really need to sit the fuck down because what the fuck does your issues with Rich have to do with Peter Guns? He ain't got nothing to do with that. And the fact that you stopped his money when this man already got 10 motherfucking kids. You stopping his money. And you expect for Tara to sit up there and agree, agree with you stopping his money flow. That's her kid's money. You taking money out of her kid's mouth. And you expect her to agree with what the fuck you said. I don't give a fuck what nobody say about Tara. Everything she fucking said to Cisco was the fucking truth. Because Cisco was being a little bitch. And he don't see what the fuck he did was wrong. And it was. You were being a little bitch. That's what the fuck you were being. Like you mad with you gonna stop somebody else's money because you mad at rich? You mad at rich, so everybody else gotta gotta suffer the consequences. You be doing a lot of fuckboy shit for the very beginning and you want somebody to feel sorry for you. I don't feel sorry for you. You a punk ass nigga. You know what I mean? You are a bitch ass nigga and you always doing bitch ass shit, but you want some sympathy for it. And you want Tyra to have some sympathy for you when you taking money out of her kid's mouth. She don't need to have no sympathy for your punk bitch ass. You always acting like a bitch. And I'm tired of it. Real talk. I'm tired of you acting like a bitch. You act more bitch than me. Real talk. Like, a lot of you niggas on TV, y'all ain't got the heart that I got. Because a lot of y'all are bitches. Y'all handle shit like little bitches. I hang around a lot of females. Enough females to know when somebody is acting like a bitch. Or handling shit like a bitch. And that's what the fuck you doing. Doing shit like a bitch. Real talk. That's what you're doing. Like, I can't get jiggy with that shit. You being a bitch, and that's what it is. So then... He talks to Peter. And Peter is here to talk to Cisco. But Cisco don't want to admit that he was wrong. He really want to sit up here and say everybody in the creep squad want to make it seem like I'm wrong. Bitch you are. You tried to stop self from working with Mariah Lynn. You tried to do it behind his back. You stopped Peter Gunn's money from flowing. And then you got mad with rich over diamond so you decide to fuck with Mariah Lynn just because he was fucking diamond a bitch that you didn't even care about a bitch that you didn't even claim but you mad now rich was wrong for that but that's supposed to be your nigga and you mail him about a piece of pussy that you don't even give a fuck about like are you serious right now but I thought you and Rich were cool at this point. So now you want to take your frustrations out on Rich, uh, about Rich out on Peter. You stopping his money. This man got 10 kids. 
He can, he need every piece of money that he can get. And you talking about ten thousand dollars is some punk ass money for a nigga with ten kids is not punk ass money. Okay, it's not punk ass money. And you don't think that you wrong. So then you gonna run up on Peter, and then after that, you saying. That your mother is passing away and all of that, which I felt your pain. I really did. I, I honestly did feel bad for you when I found out that your mom was dying. I really did. Like, nobody wants, you know, nobody wants to deal with the pain of losing a parent. Nobody wants to feel, nobody, nobody wants to go through that. And, you know, I've had friends that lost their mothers and, and, and their parents and stuff. So, I do understand that. And um, that made Peter... You know, feel for you because, you know, it explains why you've been acting out because, you know, you lost your wife and then, you know, you lost your paint, your mother, and now you're losing all your friends. I understand why you would feel like you're losing it all. I really do understand it. But, bitch, stop acting like a punk ass bitch for once in your motherfucking life. Stop doing that. Like... I, I feel bad for you, but when you acting like a bitch, that does not give just be okay. You losing your mother, I understand. You lost your wife, I understand why you would have some hurt feelings, but that does not give you the right to act like a bitch and treat your friends like shit. It's a lot of things that I went through, but I never took that out on people that I love. I never took that out on people that I call my motherfucking friends. You're a bitch, and you got it on me. And with that being said, this is my love and hip hop review. All my social media is at the bottom. And be sure to comment, like, rate, and subscribe. And let your motherfucking friends know to subscribe. Shout out to my boy Jamar84. You know, make sure y'all go and subscribe to his page, Jamar84. And y'all, I'm out of here. To my next review, I'm out. Married to Medicine still coming. Don't, don't get it twisted. It's still coming. But, you know, I'm out of here, y'all. Peace. Ugh. I swear Cisco act like he got a period. I thought I was a bitch sometimes, but this nigga here, child.